What happened at the appeal court was a class war between those who brought the petition. It will be Labour Party, PDP, Atiku, APM, all the petitioners and the common Nigerians who voted for them against the elites, people who think they control the power to determine the person that will be the president or other high positions. That was basically what happened. It was a class war. For those of you who watched the event live, you can feel the triumph in their tune. You can feel the reprimand. You can feel the, hey, how dare you think you can come to power through the common man, through the people that actually owns the power. The judges were basically ranting, saying all sorts of things just to justify their bias. How can a judge say that it wasn't Tinubu that was taken to court that forfeited the money, that it was his bank account that was involved in the crime? How can a learned judge, a so-called learned in quotes, say this? Does he mean he doesn't know the source of the money? So the bank account also committed money laundering because he was moving the money around trying to launder it. It was the bank account that committed all this. It also made the money inside the account to come from narcotics trafficking. Oh, such a pity. There's no need going through all they said, the perversion of justice, because it doesn't matter anymore. The petitioners have declared their intention to appeal the judgment to the Supreme Court. They have 14 days to do that. When judges make it difficult for a litigant to get judgment after an election, they might decide to seek self-help in future because they already know that they won't get judgment in court. How can the court refuse to accept INEX CTCs of election results? Because they are the topmost in hierarchy when you want to prove that you won an election. That's why the petitioners went for INEX CTCs. And according to the law, CTCs are supposed to be the exact replica of the original. Since INEC gave them blank copies and blood copies as original copies, why is the court now turning around and blaming the petitioners who received the supposed result sheets that was used in conducting the election? Is it the fault of the petitioner that INEC gave them blood copies? It's not their fault. Yes, they have their own copies that they received at the polling units. But there is a reason they went for INEC copies because these are the ones that was used to conduct the election. So this should be acceptable in court. The INEC copy is the only original copy because it is on it that the polling officer will write the results. All the other copies, the police copy, party agent copy, all of them are duplicates. And you know that these duplicates, the ink on them fades over time. That notwithstanding, even if they submitted their own party agent copies, the judges will also find an excuse and throw them away. In this election cycle, a lot of women set themselves apart. We saw what the resident electoral commissioner in Abia State did during the governorship election there. Of recent, we saw what one lady justice did in Kanu when she exposed a lawyer that wanted to bribe her. So all this we've seen to the extent that many people started demanding to have a lady as the INEC chairman and in other high positions where men have failed. Compare that to the appeal court judges, the only lady that made the panel that heard this petition was the one that threw insults at the petitioners and the witness. Imagine telling the petitioners if they expected the judges to go to social media to get the evidence in order to award them the win. Were they expecting the court to go and gather evidence from the streets or from the market or to be persuaded or intimidated by threats on social media? The kind of language they used is not something you expect from a lawyer, not to talk of judges. What the judges have succeeded in doing with this so-called judgment that they delivered is that they have endorsed and validated criminality in our political system. That means going forward, people will try hard to rig elections because they know to prove that the election was rigged will be very hard in court. That's the precedence they set. Contestants in future elections will need to budget enough money, not for adverts or publicity, but to buy thugs, to snatch ballot boxes, to buy election officials, to buy INEC people, to buy all the way to the courts. Yes, that's basically what they endorse. There's no need to campaign anymore. What are you campaigning for? Many governorship elections are coming up. Who knows what will happen in these elections?
elections are supposed to be free and fair. You go out there in the field, convince people, tell them what you have to offer, and they will vote for you. It was supposed to be simple. But no, after all the promises INEC made that they will upload election result sheets on IREV so that the ward collation officer can verify the results on IREV before starting collation. But all these never happened and the judges have now endorsed them. So going forward, INEC wouldn't need to upload anything. Yes, that's the precedence. Why should one of the judges ask Labour Party why they contested results in places where they won with landslide? Was he trying to say that rigging is acceptable? That if a candidate receives votes that are not lawful, that it should be allowed or neglected because it is small? If that's what it means, then there's no hope. He couldn't hide his obvious bias. He very much sounded like an APC member or the respondents. He should have just concentrated on writing his judgment instead of going the extra mile of defending the defendants. Imagine being the petitioner in this circumstance. You're up against the defendants and also the judges. In fact, the Labour Party and PDP never stood a chance in front of these judges right from day one. Even during the elections, they never stood a chance against the system. Because you can trace all the problems to Buhari. Because he wanted to return the favour to Tinubu, that's why we are here today. Having supported him 2015 and 2019, both financially and otherwise, he decided that power must go to him. So that Tinubu will return the favour next time. That's all. So the whole system is against the opposition, including the judges. They don't want to be brought down from where they are. They enjoy Nigerian system the way it is. They want it to continue. Status quo must be maintained. The worst part is that if Buhari had done anything to uplift the Nigerian economy in the past eight years, Nigerians wouldn't have minded. They would have said, ah, allow them to continue. After all, we are better off than in 2015. But the reverse is the case. They just want to hold power and be in control. They are not interested in making any change, any impact on the economy. In fact, it has been the other way around. Nigerians were better off in 2015 or even 2016 compared to today. Going to the Supreme Court is just a formality. Before now, Nigerians were worried about the Supreme Court than the Appeal Court. But now that the bombshells have come from Appeal Court, what will happen in the Supreme Court? No one knows. They have 14 days to appeal at the Supreme Court and immediately they appeal, the Supreme Court will bring out the timeline for hearing the appeal. Let's see if they will endorse the rewriting of our constitution by the appeal court judges. Let's see if there will be voices of reason at the Supreme Court. Let's see if some justices who in the past disqualified candidates for certificate surgery and other things, let's see if these kind of judges will make the panel that will hear the appeal. Yes, whatever happens, let them complete the cycle so that Nigerians will know that the law is a respecter of persons. That when the law sees people like Tinubu or other APC people, it will bow to them. Unlike what is supposed to be, the law is supposed to be a non-respecter of persons. No matter how highly placed anyone is, the law must take its course. All the people that predicted what happened at their pay court have been vindicated. You will not also blame people that decided to trust in the law and not be lawless. You won't blame them for choosing to stand on the path of the truth. Because the truth will always set one free. Thanks for watching.